Champions, I've all got a treat for you. Here's a basement amp. That's the uh, 50 odd watt head from Fender. Uh, it's the AC568 circuit. Um, so a bit of background on this. They had the AB165. I'm not a Fender historian, so correct me if I'm wrong, but at the end of the day, I'm just giving you the gist of it. So they, they had a, in most people's opinion, better sounding circuit, the AB165. Um, and as production increased, they needed to have less skilled assemblers. So people that could paint by numbers, just follow the layouts and not really know about electronics or lead dress or what needs to be where, not know if this leads five mil that way, if it's gonna be an issue. So they changed the circuit to make the assembly a little bit more idiot proof. Uh, we'll go over in a minute what changes they did, but uh, essentially things to address oscillation, instability, that kind of thing. Um, but in most people's opinion, that resulted in not the best sounding basement. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bit of a hybrid basement. It's going to be AC568, AB165 front end, more or less. And everything from the phase inverter on will be AA864. So that's the phase inverter, the uh, feedback network, the output stage, and the bias supply. Um, the only difference to the preamp that we'll make that will be similar like an AA864 is changing the supply for uh, the two second gain stages so they're fed from the same node um, which improves noise and hiss and that was a little tip from Lyle at Psionic Audio so yeah thanks for having my back there champion he sees a lot more of these than I do <laughs> Uh, check for drifted components, do a recap. It's also getting a mains conversion because it's got this US plug, super, super sketchy plug. Um, bit of a grandfather clause here, like the thing's always had it. So, But how easy is it to, to reach down and touch that while you're pulling it out? I mean, the plug's tiny, it's smaller than a cannon plug. And it's uh, able to be reversed, which is not good. Um, this has the stock death cap in it. Uh, they call a death cap with the ground switch. We might, I'll talk to the owner, we might repurpose that for something. Um, possibly a negative feedback, two levels of negative feedback, which is a nice little repurposing for that. Um, having said that, he's had this since new. I believe new or new-ish. And he reckons he's never serviced it, basically. Uh, it's got the original caps. Not even one of them's been replaced. They're starting to... Uh, to spew out the ends, as you'd expect. Uh, they've got little ventilation holes there, and there are, uh, you can see the schmoo starting to ooze out of them. Um, apparently one of the resistors smoked. They don't look too bad, but this one looks a bit discolored, so I dare say one of these has gone short and, um, and started to take that resistor with it. So we'll go over, over everything, as I always say. Um, we'll check all the valves once it's in a, a functional state. We'll do a full recap, we'll clean the boards, we'll change the transformer out for a Hammond replacement for 240 volts. We'll check the sockets are good, you can see there's quite a bit of discoloration around here. I doubt that's from runaway or anything too nefarious. I think it's just tobacco smoke over the years and the rising heat from the valves draws it up and it, it, it sticks to the chassis. Um, we're going to give the thing... A bit of a clean, but not too much of a clean. Like, we still want to maintain its its patina. Uh, but we also want good grounds. We're going to remove the connections to the transformer hardware. Redo the uh, we'll check for any leakage through the board as well as through any of the uh, coupling caps. Uh, yeah, just going to give it the full works burger. So, um, stick with us and hopefully we'll have some interesting video content. So interestingly inside the doghouse here you can see because uh, the amp's upside down and this is the bottom face one of the caps has leaked all sorts of horrid shit probably a long time ago and it's crystallized on the inside of the um, inside of the doghouse here. This usual sticky butyl based uh, rubber that they use to um, push down the, the caps which is uh, well non-existent.
Perhaps someone's uh, removed that in the past. I didn't do it. But yeah, normally there's a big chunk of schmoo there. You can see it has been there, but someone's got rid of it. And it's not stuck to the caps either. Anyway, <laughs> it's not to lose sleep over it, eh? Uh, so we've got date codes on the cap 68, 43rd week of 68, 16th week of 69, 9th week of 69. Eh. 10th week of 69, 36th week of 68, and 6th week of 69. So there you go. So that was, these were manufactured in the summer of love and uh, suitably have shot schmoo everywhere. <laughs> so for V1 we've got a Sylvania 12AX7. Uh, is there a date code on there? Not that I can make out. V2. Got a General Electric 12AX7. Oh, it's a bit faded, but that's another GE. 12AX7, you can see. Try not to remove the lettering. This looks like a Jan Phillips uh, 12AT7 for the phase inverter. So again, if they're handy, if they're still decent, we'll reuse them. We'll clean the sockets and. Uh, we're not going to throw them out if they're still good, especially in the current climate. So looking from the side here, it looks like someone's pulled that resistor and then reinstalled it. So possibly that was another tech isolating uh, that resistor to test for drift at some point in the past. Don't know. Again, let's not lose sleep over it. We'll. Uh, We'll do what we need to to make this thing purr. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just you, you can't figure out the backstory of an amp. There's just inexplicable stuff that's happened to it. You know, I've learned over the years to take it a little bit with a grain of salt. Sometimes you know you can find evidence in there that might lead you to the current problem. Uh, maybe someone's missed something, whatever. But a lot of the time, there's just inexplicable stuff there that you just. You go crazy if you get preoccupied with it. So the fuse, we've got a two amp in there, which is suitable. Uh, this was run on a step-down transformer, uh, probably borderline undersized one. Actually, I think it was like it was like 150 watt or something. So it probably sagged quite a bit when this thing was getting pushed. Having said that, maybe it was never pushed. So that looks intact. Looks ancient, but it looks intact. Let's just test that. And she is indeed intact. So that's good, no blowing fuses. And correct rated fuses. Someone has scratched back at the tranny here at some point in the past. We've got codes on there. Uh, I can't remember exactly how to read them, but it's 69. I'm assuming that's 69 there in the middle. That's the date code. And I guess that's the model number at the top. We've got another 69 there and another 69 there, so it looks like they're all original line on the choke and the uh, two transformers. They're all dated 69 anyway, so that's cool. So first thing we'll do is we'll snip this cord off. We're doing a mains conversion anyway, and it's just getting in the way and getting annoying. The rubber's all uh, starting to fray and split there at the entry point as well. Get rid of that. I can go in the fuck it bucket. No, that'll go into the bag of stuff that we give back to the customer so he's got all the original parts still. Uh, uh, it's got this strange thin wire which which um, came in around that time. It's uh, also a bit of a worry. I'm hoping that's not a massive issue. There's, um, there's a little bit of green green crap on each of the solder connections at the end of the wire. Now I've had this on boxes, uh, not throughout the circuit, um, but just on their transformer leads where it's like the solder flux over time um, has corroded the wire. And that green stuff's actually uh, copper, 
Oh, what is it? Copper, uh, copper um, sulfate, chloride. I oh, forget. Chemistry class is a long time ago. But yeah, that green shit. Um, and it works its way up the jacket of the wire and basically corrodes within the wire. So it doesn't matter how much you strip back and try and uh, tin a new section of wire, the solder just doesn't stick to it. Um, you pretty much have to replace the wire and I'm really hoping that's not the case because that could be a full rebuild. And this is already expensive enough how it is with the transformer replacement, so that would be a bit of a showstopper. But hey, I'm used to showstoppers around here. They happen almost every fucking day, so you just got to lose money on a job, yay. Anyway, um, so we'll hope that that's not an issue. We'll maybe find one of the ones that's got a bit of excess length and just strip it back a little bit and see if see if that's uh, see if that's a problem. Um, or maybe one of the circuit modifications if we're eliminating a wire we'll use that as a sample piece like this grounding grounding switch we're going to be taking all of that out so we can use those bits of wire to determine if it's a massive issue because that that green shit's probably conductive it's probably got uh copper ions in it which is fun so even the uh output transformer wiring here it's got that white mildewy shit on it so I have to disconnect all that and clean it off. We'll check the components for drift as well. We won't bother checking the ones that we're going to rip out. Um, these are cathode resistors. Don't ask. Fender went through a stage. <laughs> so this is a fixed bias amp, but it's also got 150 ohm cathode resistors, one on each 6L6 on, uh, from the ground, obviously, to the cathode. Uh, apparently that was a stability thing. Um, but yeah, it's like one of the very, very few amps on the planet that has it, and uh, that's going bye-bye. So let's go have a look at the schematics. So after a bit of investigation, uh, we've looked into the weird output stage set up on the AC568 circuit. Essentially, it's, a, I guess you could say, a filter. Uh, it cancels out, through the differential nature of the output stage, subsonic frequencies. So they've elevated the cathode in order to create a point that they can put this capacitor from cathode to cathode and that allows uh, above a certain frequency to pass and cancels it out um, so that removes their oscillation woes they were having at the time apparently we've done away with that and we've addressed it via a combination of lead dress and a few value changes um, we've got it in a sweet spot so here's a new transformer, it's a Hammond Manufacturing, my favourite, uh, if you can get them for that model. 290 EEX, so that's the universal uh, primary. I'll just check that those centres are right, because <clears throat> I have been bitten by that before. 88 miles per hour, 88 miles per hour, yeah, 70. This is millimetres, not like crazy inch bullshit. 70. <laughs> we cut out 82. Good year, that one. And 63. Yep, all good. <clears throat> it's just a little bit taller because it's got the 50 hertz mains. Uh, it's, uh, frequency, sorry, so the core's a bit bigger for that reason. It's about another third taller than the old one, so that'll fit hunky dorily. So that'll be the uh, probably the first thing we do. Well, I'll probably remove the transformer just so we can maneuver the thing around easily, and I'll put a bit of tape on there so we don't scratch the bell housing while we're still working on the amp. I do have it on a cork block, but you never know if it slips out or something. So what I like to start doing with amps like this. Just go through and uh, check all the resistors for drift first. They're all 10 percenters. So we've got that, that's just over the tolerance. That's under. That's well under. Well, it's probably got something in series with it. But just go through and see if anything's way out of whack. Some of these components we're going to be changing out anyway, so we don't bother checking them. Okay, so that there is the resistor that smoke came from, apparently. 
that's a one K resistor and that's reading 1.8 now so that's pretty much doubled in value and that's generally what happens when they uh, when they get overloaded like that the carbon comps so anyway we can start snipping we have got approval on this job so snippity doo -dah. a bit easier to just pull the cap leads through the board while it's screwed down Alright, so that's fully removed now. Make cleaning the uh, chassis a bit easier too, so happy days. Just remove the remainder of this cord with my special little pliers. They make it so easy. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Disconnect this auxiliary uh, mains output as well. You can get blanking plugs for them, but uh, blanking plates for them, but just disconnect it and hardwire everything. Disconnect this uh, ground switch, not needed, unsafe anyway. Disconnect the transformer. God, turn that buffer back on, that flux is funky. So all the cloth wires are going bye bye anyway because they're on the uh, transformer. Someone's reworked stuff in here in the past. Actually, I reckon it had never been serviced, but I don't see uh, some of these solder connections being from the fa fender factory. Just remove the whole bias card there. It's got the ancient diodes, which they've had to stack in series to deal with the voltage. We might replace them with uh, some modern equivalents for liability. That cap, 69er, ready to be replaced actually see some cracking in the solder joint there as well disconnect these plate wires in order to give them a clean so they've got that weird white crap all over them test these screen grid resistors outside of tolerance 517 ohm 525 ohm, so we'll change them out. Got some 2000 uh, picofarads number caps to ground from the grids. They can go away as well. we'll remove those screen grid resistors, replace them with some 5 waters just for better heat dissipation. Y wound. Those output grid stoppers have been heat affected too, likely, so uh, they've drifted. Out they come. So the amp's this old, it's like... Yeah, people get on your case for replacing a bunch of stuff, but... So there's what they call the death cap. It looks like a lolly, doesn't it? Fantail or something. Um, that's a suppression cap, basically, to shunt them the noise to ground uh, from either of the lines depending which way you plug the lead in. Um, there are still capacitors used in a similar manner uh, but they're called X and Y class capacitors and they're rated so they always fail open, open circuit, they don't fail short circuit so uh, these don't have any such rating, they're just your average film caps and they tend to fail a short circuit and don't do what they do, what they call self healing which is what X-Class caps do. Uh, if they do have a failure, it tends to correct itself. It's designed to correct itself. It burns away the fault, so the fault goes away and doesn't go short circuit and explode. Uh, these don't, and they can go short circuit, and with a two-prong cord, well, you've got no ground, so now your, your chassis is energized. Um, that's why two-prong cords and, ground, and uh, death caps always go bye-bye when they come to my shop. So I'm just going to remove that ground switch for the moment. Give me a bit of better access to that area. I think we can take the fuse holder out too. We'll do the mains wiring last. Ah, it's better. Proper access. So this is a good example of the heater wiring being up and over instead of down in the corner of the chassis. I prefer, prefer down against the chassis because it's out of the way for service work. 
Um, now I've got to sort of work around, try not to melt the wires while I'm removing components and move it back and forth and possibly break the leads. If it was tucked down against the chassis in the back corner there, out of the way, just forget about it. That's the first thing you do when you build the amp and you never have to maneuver around it when you're, when you're working on the components that require replacement or, or blow up or whatever. So here's what I'm talking about with that wire. It's got that crusty green stuff on the end there. That's like spewing from out of the jacket, which isn't good. See, it's actually on the tin surface there. So I'll strip a bit of that back and see what it looks like. So I took it back another quarter inch or so, and luckily it's that pre-tin stranded wire. So the copper itself was uncorroded. It was protected by the tinning that, uh, that it was under the jacket from the factory. So. We were able to make a nice connection on the end there. Thank dog for that. Oh, champions, it's my favourite time of day. It's after knockoff time, so I can shut the doors, no distractions, I can just get some work done. So we've done a bit of cleaning up. We've, uh, we, me, have removed the bias setup. We've got some new bias feed resistors here, 220K. Got a common line there that will go back to the bias pot. So that's a different setup to how it was before. We've got some new value coupling caps there, point ones. Uh, we've got the uh, AA864 plate load resistors for the PI, for the phase inverter. We've taken everything off the output sockets. We've got new grid stoppers because the other ones are out of spec. Uh, we've just cleaned everything up, giving it a good wash, trying not to uh, affect the, the texture here with the alcohol. Um, we've got new, we're going to go sort of fender style braids to the ground, to the chassis there. We're going to remove all this, this solder around here. I've got the, uh, the bullshit high power um, soldering iron heating up. We're going to remove the transformer, give us a bit of room to move. Install some screen grid resistors while that's warming up. Got some wire wounds on here instead of the carbon comps. Five waters. All right, solder them in place. Now we've disconnected all the connections to the trans power transformer anyway. Just remove these nuts. These nuts. Right, lift the chassis off. Slide the transformer out. You can go in the bag with all the other parts. So now our chassis is doing a big wheelie. So I'll get the timber blocks to stabilize it, level it. I'll see you guys with the high tech uh, amp stands that you buy for 300 bucks from Mojo Tone or whatever, how much ever they are. Uh, a couple of wooden blocks, mate, that's all you need. Easier to maneuver around. Got a couple of different sizes. They're offcuts from furniture I built at home, so it didn't cost me anything. So now we'll get the buffer over here nice and close because that old flux is pretty funky. And I'll go in tandem with the pace. We'll scrape off the majority of that and just flick it away. So I've just got a pallet knife here, we'll just flick the solder onto that. as soon as it touches something cold. Just gets the majority off anyway. You can see it doesn't even stick to it. When you remove the solder, you can see the contact patches aren't that great really. Get the pace out. Do the rest with a bit of braid. You can sort of scrub away with the braid a little bit too. It's softer than the metal but harder than the semi-molten lead and the flux. Alright, we'll see where that got us. Clean off the flux residue with a bit of um, a bit of alcohol. Being careful of that signature there as well. I know it's not a 
classic amp this model, but we do want to retain as much as we can of the originality. Originality? Originalness? Is that a word? No, it's not. Don't answer that. I get rid of the uh, solder blobs where the old cathode resistors were for the output valves because we're not using them now. They were barely holding on as well. This one's in a bit of a trickier spot, trying not to melt anything. Alright, champions. So here's the new boards. That's the little bias board there we've reworked. We don't need the string of three diodes on either side of the uh, center tap because uh, we have modern diodes. So instead of these things, I couldn't had a quick look for a data sheet on them to find the ratings of the stock ones that I couldn't wasn't readily available but I've got two 1N4007s in there and then we've redone the bias supply to suit the AA864 style circuit. Uh, we've also redone, we cleaned the hell out of this and the backing board to get all the, the fungus and the old flux and stuff off it off this board as well so they're all nice and shiny new. Went out of my way to save the little signature there. It's drawn in crayon. The uh, alcohol would dissolve that, so we sort of worked around it. And gave it a quick wipe, but um, but yeah, tried to avoid damaging it. Got new droppers in there, metal films, 220K, 2 watt, uh, and tube amp doctor caps. We've got two 100 microfarad, 350 volts in series. That's 50 microfarad thereabouts with the tolerance. 105 degree rated, which is nice, and we've got three uh, 22 microfarad to replace the original 20s. We've got one less cap here, so we've got an empty spot. That used to have an 8 microfarad, and the schematic, in reality, it had a 16 microfarad as the last node, uh, going to the, the first stage of the uh, normal channel, and the first stage, well, the first stage of both channels. Uh, now we've got one less node, we've shifted our, uh, our power scheme a little bit, so the uh, AA864 only has the three preamp nodes, or you know, one for the phase inverter and then two preamp nodes. Um, so that's them. And of course we can't forget our little dropper resistors there. We've got the 1K and the 4.7K, and we don't have the 27K anymore because we're one node less. So this is the setup for the AA864. Right, so now we're gonna go through and clean up this outside of the chassis. You can see there the um, difference between one that I've cleaned up and one that I haven't. And the valve retainers there. So it's coming off, just needs a bit of a soak with the alcohol. I think it's mainly, um, yeah, tobacco, uh, smoke, residue which dissolves pretty readily with isopropyl alcohol. Well, look at that, would ya? A lot of scrubbing. And she's come up beautifully. Just gotta uh, reinstall that cap board and the clean the dog house as well, cause that's pretty manky. And then flip her over and finish off the inside. Well, there's the cap board reinstalled. Uh, all hooked up. We've got one spare wire for the node that we no longer need so I'll pull that through from the other side and, and uh, reroute the last one to the uh, AA864 uh, power scheme. So it's time to install this Hammond. I'm gonna stick some tape on the top surface just so we don't scratch it moving it around on the bench. Ask me how I learned that one. All right, it was just one of my builds, but yeah, it looked, uh, looked pretty terrible. Not that you've got your head poking around inside the, the cabinet too often, but every little bit to show that we care, you know? All right, so it's got reasonably large holes and reasonably small bolts. So I'm gonna stick some slightly oversized washers just to even the load out a bit and some uh, stainless Starlock washers as well, just to keep them tight. So we'll pop that in from this side and then we'll flip it over. Put the logo at the back. Try not to crush my thumb. And there we go. 
So we've got a couple of unused windings here on the uh, primary, so we'll link them up. 